All right. Good Wednesday evening to you. It's good to see each one. I am thankful that God's allowed us another opportunity to come and meet back together again. Thank you for the blessings and mercies He supplied, knowing that this evening every good thing we've got is from Him. Without Him, we'd have nothing. I appreciate each one of you being here. I'm thankful that God's given us this opportunity. It's always good to be able to gather together tonight. Let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray for the service. Pray that God's will be done. And that in everything that goes on, He'll get honored, He'll get glory, He'll be lifted up. Because, folks, it's all about Him. It's yeah. not about me and you. It's about Him because He's the only one that's worthy to be praised. So let's pray for the service tonight. Pray that I'll see and do what God would have me to do. Pray that I get the touch that I need from up above. Let's pray tonight that, that something will be said or done that will encourage your hearts. Encourage souls, lift each other up, maybe give somebody a, a, a glimpse of if they don't know Jesus, what it would be like to follow him. So as we go to the Lord in prayer tonight, uh, Brother Russell, lead us, please, if you would. I have to follow the Lord. We do thank you for this life. Yes, you be back. I have to sign the Lord. We just pray for each home and family you. represented here. Lord, thank you. Yes, just as well. Watch him. Bless this little church. Lord, pray about that. He stands a little bit, Lord. Yes, God. Lord, we stand most of you up behind the Lord. Those on the prayer list, we actually touch there. Thank you, brother. You know, I am on. Come on. I am. Oh, now we are. Thank you, brother. All right. Well, it is good to be back tonight. You know, it's it's Wednesday night, and I know that things have been sort of changed, and and things that we used to do on a regular basis, uh, not sort of like they were. But you know, there's one part of Wednesday night that I have truly missed. And that's hearing people bragging on God. So tonight, and I know that the, the, one of the deacons usually, usually does this, and we'll get back to that <coughs> shortly, but uh, tonight, you got, you got a word you want to brag, you want to talk about how God's been good to you, please tonight, help yourself. Anybody? I thank God for blessed to be here tonight in God's house. Yeah. I know I prayed with all we back here together soon. And the good Lord made a way. Without him there is no other way. I thank the night for saving me. But I could have each one of you. And someday by the grace of God I'm gonna beat y'all on the other side. Y'all we're gonna get there through the mighty blood of brother Jesus. Y'all pray for me and I'll pray for two of y'all that's no heaven. Amen. Thank you, Brother Herm. Anybody? Anybody? I got to say to my soul first and foremost. Yes, baby, I went here today. I don't think that I did it. I 
I do thank you for letting me be able to be here tonight. Get to look around and see my family sitting back in here again. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I mean, y'all are family that I've been. I've missed y'all a whole lot that way, but I've yeah. seen y'all in my thoughts about every day. Yeah. Trying my best to keep you in my prayers every night. But it is so good to be back here tonight. I just pray that you should continue to bless us and keep us safe through this virus mess. Just watch over the share for us that way. Y'all just pray for me. I pray for all these that's lost out here. Just maybe listening over the airways now. We'll get the message from God and everything that they need and everybody and take a look at their hearts and everybody and see where they stand with it. They call upon him to save them for us to wake up right. I got a feeling that some people might be waking up. Yeah. After all this mess that's going on up there, they gonna they gonna be turning to God. I just hope they don't turn to God just to use a spare tire. Right. Y'all just let me pray for those lost loved ones. I know I got lost loved ones. And I, I want to see them saved up there. That's all I can do is pray for them up there. Y'all let me pray for them and I'll pray for y'all as best I can. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Anybody else? Anybody else? Thank the Lord for saving for me. Thank you for what he's provided for us through all this mess. Yeah. You know, my work never slowed down a lick. If anything, we got busier. We was considered essential, so we never missed a paycheck. Katie might have missed a couple shifts, but the Lord blessed just Thank so you. much. That it brought us back together as family. It's, it's, it's restored. Our bond has made it even stronger and tighter. It's honestly, it's helped us get back to the old way. Yeah. Amen. Helped us get back to the old way, the way that uh, we're supposed to be. And I'm thankful for that. Uh, talking about my job, I know before we left out of here, we was praying about some people not losing their jobs. They was going to lay off nine people. Well, two of them took a package and went ahead on and retired. They were at retirement age close to it, so they went on and uh, took the package, so there were seven other people that were going to be affected at the end of May. The Lord made a way. They get to keep their jobs at least through the end of this year, maybe longer, depending on how much more business we get. But the Lord's just provided for us in every step of the way, in every single way. Thank you for the way he's took after, uh, looked after Katie. You know, she's been on the front line with this COVID mess and, uh, several nights, and uh, the Lord's kept that virus away from us, away from our family, and away from her, especially. And, uh, you know, we just got a mighty awesome God. I'm thankful yeah. for the blood that He shed for me on Calvary, for the remission of sin, for His Word, for uh, the fire that He's put inside of me to, to want to serve Him and want to, to want to try to be like Him and try to lead other people to Him. I'm, I'm just I'm thankful for being able to come back to church, but I. Right. I tell you what, the, 
I know this. I, I know it's great to gather together, but we are the church, and uh, and, and I had some good times outside. Of yeah. Amen. Outside, I had some good times listening online, and, yeah. and you, you know, uh, I probably listen to more preaching during the time we've been out than yeah. I than I would normally because I didn't just listen to Brother Wayne. I listened to. I was able to listen to other ones that I you yeah. know that I've never heard and, mm-hmm. and uh, didn't get to listen to on a regular basis. And, and uh, I like one of them said, I, I believe God's on the move. And I believe uh, mm-hmm. he's about to have a great awakening here in the United States. And I mm-hmm. just pray that he'll move and that he'll bring peace. And, mm-hmm. and uh, whatever it is, I, I trust him. Amen. Amen. Trust him. Trust. That's right. Whatever happens, trust him. Trust. Anybody else? All right, let me say again. It is good for each one of you to be here to see each one of you here tonight. Open your Bibles, if you will, to Judges chapter number 8. Judges chapter number 8. I hope tonight you come praying. I hope tonight you come seeking a blessing. I hope something will be said tonight. They'll encourage you. They'll lift you up. They'll strengthen you. Uh, a very simple message tonight. And uh, I'm not going to hold you very long. But I think it's something that all of us need to be reminded of. And I had not been reminded of it myself enough until I got to read this. I love I love the book of Judges. I, and I guess, you know, between Jephthah and Gideon and, and, and Samson, and I know that that, that Jephthah opened his mouth, maybe pushed it a little too far. I know Samson lived a far from perfect life. Gideon, I know he doubted and kept wanting to test God to find out. But, you know, when we see what these men did, and we see that they did it, and we understand they did it through the power of God. Not through their own power, but through the power of God. It ought to teach you something. If you're able to stand tonight in respect to the Word of God, I'm only, I'm only going to read one verse. That's Judges chapter 8 and verse number 4. And the Bible says, And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over, he and the 300 men that were with him, faint yet pursuing them. Thank you. You can be seated. Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Fathers, we come to you again. We do thank you and praise you for another day that you've given us, for the blessings and mercies of life. Thank you for the way that you've watched over us, supplied our needs. We thank you for giving us health and strength, and keeping us safe from harm and danger, both seen and unseen. We thank you tonight, Father, for the roof over our heads, the clothes on our back, the shoes on our feet. Lord, you've been good. I'm thankful tonight, Father, to know that unless something happens when I get home, there's a pillow to lay my head on. And I thank you for that. Father, I thank you for the privilege of being able to be back in your house tonight. I thank you for these that's made their way out. I thank you for every home and family that's represented here. And Father, I'm thankful tonight that they made a conscious choice to come out to your house. I'm thankful tonight, Lord. There's other things that they could be doing in other places they could be. But Lord, they chose to be here tonight. And I'm thankful for that. I thank you more than anything tonight for saving me, keeping me saved. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for that cross at Calvary. Thankful tonight that he was willing to shed that blood and that that blood was sufficient to cleanse me of my sins. And God, tonight, I beg you to forgive me. Beg you, God, cleanse me anything at all between me and you. Take it away and get it out of the blood. And Father, I ask you tonight to help me for the next few minutes. I ask you, Lord, to take away anything that might hinder or quench. I ask you, Lord, to build a hedge around this place that the devil can't get through. I ask you, Lord, to clear our minds and not let us think about what we're going to do after a while or what we're going to do tomorrow. But God, just let us be concerned and, and centered around the message of the hour. God, help me tonight to say and do what you'd have said. I pray, God, that you give me that fresh touch, that fresh anointing. I pray tonight that you just reach down. And Father, overshadow this place. Father, use me in the way that you see fit. I pray God tonight that something will be said that will lift your people up to encourage them, to strengthen them. Pray tonight, God, that I won't say anything that will lead them astray. Father, help me tonight and just say and do what you'd have done. And for what you do, we'll thank you. For we ask it in Jesus' name. 
Amen. We know the story of Gideon. We know that he started out with 32 fives. We know that God said that's too many. So he said, you ask all of them that are afraid, step forward. 22,000 of them were scared. He said, send them home. Yeah. Had 10,000 left going up against over 150,000 Amalekites, Midianites. God says you got too many. God said, take them down to the river. He said, I want to, I want to watch them drink. And he said, what do you mean drink? Just take them down to the river. Tell them to drink. There was some got down on their hands and knees, put their face all the way down to the water. There was some knelt down, dipped their hands in it, and was lapping like a dog out of their hands. You say, what's the difference? Those that were just kneeling, they were watching. He said, those are the ones you need. You need those that are going to watch for the enemy. You need those that are going to pay attention. You say, wait a minute, Lord, they were 300 of them. What do I do with the other 9,700? Send them home. 300 men. So they've been up all night now. They're surrounding the Amalekites, the Midianites in that valley. You know what happens. All they got in their hand, they got a sword in one hand. They got a pitcher, a clay pitcher in the other. They got a lamp that's inside that clay pitcher. And Gideon said, when I make the shout, you break that pitcher, let the light shine, and shout out the sword of the Lord into Gideon. Mm -hmm. And at that point, God so confused and discomfited, there were those soldiers down in the valley, they began to turn on each other. Those that took off, those that survived, Gideon and the 300 went after them. Think about this. They've been up all day. They've been up all night. Now, the sun's beating down. And the Bible says they get to where they're going out of the Jordan River. And yet, they were wore out. They were tired. They were hungry. They were thirsty. And yet, they kept on going. You know, tonight, and I've, I've tried several times. I'm not talking tonight. And I don't want you to even think about being discouraged. I don't want you to think about being downtrodden or, or disheartened or, or broken spirited. That's not what was wrong with these men tonight. They'd seen what God had done. Yeah. These men were just slapped wore out. Yeah. You know, there's times in our life we get tired. Yeah. And we want to sit down and do nothing. Yeah. There's times that we just so wore out. You say, preacher, I just did not want to get up off of that couch. I did not want to get out of that bed on Sunday morning. I did not want to get out of that easy chair on Sunday evening. I did not want to get up after I got up from a table on Wednesday night. And I went into the living room and I turned the television on. I did not want to get up. You don't know what kind of a day I've had. The Bible says, and Gideon came to Jordan and passed over. He and the 300 that were with him. Now you understand something. Out of those 300... Out of all those Amalekites, Midianites that died, those 300, every one of them survived. That's right. mm -hmm. It's amazing what you can do yeah. when you're faithful. Yeah. But the Bible says they were with them and they were faint. They were weary. They were languid. They were slow. They weren't moving fast. Yet, the Bible says, yet pursuing them. They were still following on. Yet, they were still following after them. Yet, they were still going towards them. They were moving forward. We need to understand tonight that these people physically tired, physical wore out, and I'll be the first to admit there's times that you and I, we want some downtime. We want some rest time. We want some me time. But can I tell you something right now? We don't have our time. The Bible says we're to redeem the time for the days are getting evil. Mm -hmm. We need to use that time right. You and I don't have our time because as I said Sunday evening, we've been bought with a price and we're not our own. Mm -hmm. And I don't have the right, when God's given me something to do, I don't have the right to say, God, I just can't do it right now. I'm just tired. Mm -hmm. Elijah, what are you doing in the cave? God, I'm just tired of it. Well, he took him a nap, an angel baked a cake, and he had the strength to go for 40 days. Right. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying we all get tired. I don't care who you are. Yeah, that's right. 
We all come to the point in our life we want to sit down. We just want to stop. We want to quit. And let me tell you something. That's when the devil has his way. Mm -hmm. I know that Jeremiah was discouraged. He wanted to stop. There was times David said, you know, why do the heathen rage? Why do the wicked have their... And he was discouraged and he wanted to stop. Uh-uh. No. Physically tired. I guarantee you. We get tired sometimes of chasing after the things of God and doing the things of God that He'd have us to do. But I'm going to tell you something. If the devil is chasing after us, we'd probably keep running as long as we can run. Yeah. You and I tonight, we need to get back to that point. We have been, every one of us tonight, commanded to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Every one of us tonight have been commanded to let our light shine Amen. so the lost and dying world can see our light. Glorify our Father which is in heaven. Every one of us tonight, we are not our own. If you've been saved by the grace of God, you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. And I can sit down and say, the Lord, I am wore out. And Lord can look at me and say, you know what? So was I. But look what I did. Amen. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 4, He was led of the Spirit up into the wilderness. And when He had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards, He was unhungered. Literally, He was starving. That don't mean He had missed a meal and His stomach was growling. That means that his, you could have probably put your hand in right here and felt His backbone. He was famished. He was starving. He wasn't just, he wasn't just, you know, boy, I could sure use a burger right now. No. He was weak. Yeah. And that's when the devil comes. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And when we're tired, and when we're weak, mm -hmm. and when we're give out, and when we don't have the strength, or when we don't think we've got the strength to do what we need to do, that's when the devil comes. And you know what a lot of us would do? The devil would say, well, just look yonder. Here you are. You tired. You're hungry. God don't care about you. Or he'd already supplied something for you. And why are you even bothering? And you know what most of us have said? You're right, now. You're right. I'm done. I'm going to sit right here on this mountain. I'm going to wait until some animal or something comes by. I'm going to kill that animal. I'm going to eat. I'm going to enjoy myself. And you know what the devil said? The devil tempted him. And that's what the word says. And that's exactly what happened. He said, I know how hungry you are. Yep. Don't tell me the devil ain't watching you and seeing what you're going through. Right. Devil's watching us. He's watching me. He's watching you. He sees everything we're going through. And he says, I know you're tired. I know you're hungry. Well, here's what you can do. You're God made flesh. Listen, the devil and Jesus were not strangers. Right. They had met. Yeah. Jesus was there when Satan was cast out of heaven. Jesus was there when Satan rebelled and took a third of the angels with him. They were had met. Yeah. They were well acquainted. Yeah. They knew. Jesus knew who Satan had been and who the, the, the archangel Lucifer had been. And then he was transformed into that devil and he knew what he was like. He knew his tricks. And Satan knew the power Jesus had. If you're that hungry, command these stones to be made bread. And Jesus is going to say, and you know what? Me and you have probably done it. Right. Mm -hmm. And what did he say? It is written, man shall not live by what? Bread alone. When was the last time when you really got weak and you really got down and you really got hungry? Instead of going to the refrigerator, when was the last time you reached for the book? Say, now wait a minute, preacher, that don't work. What happened? And I'm going to hit this again in a few minutes if the Lord lets me. But what happened in John chapter 4 when the disciples came back to the well and they said, Lord, why don't you eat? And he said, I've got meat to eat that you know not of. Yeah. What I've got right now and what I've just been through has not just filled my soul, but I don't even think about eating a sandwich right now. Amen. He said, all right, all right, if you're really who you say, and you know what he did, he took him up to the top of the table, jumped down. 
Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Take him to the mountain. I'll give you all of this. No, no, no. Thou shalt worship the Lord. Him only shalt thou worship. Every time the devil came to him, he come back with the word. And when we are at that weakest, and I'm talking physically weak, when you're if 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 you if you're dog tired, if you're laying in a hospital bed somewhere, think about some of these people. Now listen to me. I know that some people have been cooped up in their house, but what you know? What if you'd have been cooped up in a nursing home? Yeah. What if you'd have been cooped up in a hospital for the last 30, 40 days? Yeah. Where's your family? They ain't been there. They couldn't come in. What are you going to do? Right. You're laying there. Reach for the Word. Even when we're tired, that's going to strengthen us and that's going to see us through. You go down to Mark chapter 4. The Bible teaches us that He had been healing. He had been preaching. He had been touching. He'd been lifting folks up. He was tired. We're going to the other side, fellas. Get in the boat. Yeah. Where was he? He wasn't rowing. He wasn't towing. While he was preaching and healing, the rest of them, the disciples, they were probably, they might have been mingling through the crowd. They might have been sitting on the boat. They might have been sitting under a shade tree. But the Lord Jesus was tired. I'm going to sleep. We're going to the other side. Just, just let's go. The storm came. The winds rose. The waves began to roll. The disciples inside that boat, all of a sudden they realized, hey, our feet are getting wet. The water's coming over to the side. And we're going to go down and, and the wind's going to take the sail and it's going to blow us over. And Lord, wake up. Wake up. Don't you care about what we're doing? Now he would already promised them we're going to the other side. And you know if that had been me, I'd have probably said, hush and let me sleep. And I'd have rolled over. But what did he do? Even as tired as he was and as worn out as he was and as whooped as he was, he was still able to bring peace to the hearts of those men that were on that boat when he stood up and said, Peace be still. And the wind ceased. The waves stopped. And then they looked around and said, What manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? Oh, they're bragging on him now. A minute ago they was mad at him because he was going to let them die. But they're bragging on him now. The tables is about to turn. Why? Are you so fearful? And why is it that you have no faith? He's tired. And yet he's still able. There's time. Listen to me. You don't have any idea. You might be to the point that you're tired. You're sitting there. I'm done. My shoes is off. I ain't getting in my car. I ain't picking up that phone. I ain't doing nothing else the rest of the evening. I'm sitting right here. You couldn't prize me off of this couch with a hammer and a chisel. And all of a sudden, the Lord will put somebody's name on your heart. He'll put somebody into your mind. God, I don't, if I get on the phone with them, I'll be on the phone with them for two hours. I ain't got time for this. Yeah, but you don't know that as tired as you was, you don't know when you might bring a little bit of a peace and a little bit of comfort to somebody that they just need to hear a voice to know that somebody cares about them. I understand Jesus was tired, but he didn't have to leave the boat. He wouldn't have had to got up. He could have thought it and it had been done. But then they thought nature took its course. Peace. Be still. Tired. He said, preacher, what's the point? I'll tell you what the point is. If you and I are saved by the grace of God, being tired and being worn out ain't no reason to not serve Him. Having a long day ain't no reason to not serve Him. 
I don't care how tired you are when you sit down at the supper table. You ought to still have enough decency and love of God for you before you pick the fork up you still go bow your head and thank God for it. I don't care how tired you are before you put your head on that pillow at night. Before you go to sleep you still need to go to the Lord and thank Him for the blessings and mercies of the day. Now you might actually go to sleep while you're praying and I'm sorry to say I've done it. But I'm going to tell you something. At least you thought enough of it that you're going to go to Him and lift Him up and thank Him and honor Him for bringing you through that day. You say, preacher, you don't have any idea how hard I work today. Yeah, but I know who gave you the strength to do it. That's right, that's right. I know who gave you the job. Yeah. I know who gave you the ability. I know who gave you the knowledge. And I know there's people in here that does work hard. There's people in here that by the, by the end of the day, you know, they are dragging. And they want to stay home. And they want to sit on that couch. I understand that. But that still doesn't give us an excuse to not go and do what God would have us to do. I see Gideon. And he goes to the people there at Sukkot. And he goes to the people there at Penuel. Both places. And says, my men are starving. We're, we're on our way after... And, and, I don't Zelba and Zabmoon, I, I ain't going to try on them names. But he said, give us some loaves of bread. Give us something to strengthen us and help us on our way. Uh, you already got the victory? Well, not yet, but we're going to get it. Yeah, well, why should I give you anything? See, when we're, when we're dog tired... There's times that you and I expect somebody to encourage us and lift us up. There's times we expect people to, to, to take care of us and give me something to strengthen me. But you know what they did? Even though the people there in Sukkoth and the people at Penuel gave them nothing, they kept on going. But Gideon said, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. Told the people at Sukkoth, told those men, said, when I get back, after God's given me the victory, he said, I'm going to drag you through the briars and the thorns in the wilderness and y'all going to get towed up. He told the people at Penuel, he said, y'all hiding that tire. He said, I'm going to tear that tire down after God's given me the victory. Folks, let me tell you something. God's people goes through it sometimes. And the devil's going to try his best to keep you down. He's going to try his best to keep you wore out. He's going to try his best to keep you tired. He's going to try to even when you lay down your head in the pillow at night, try to keep you from getting the rest you need. But he's going to get his. And I don't mean that to sound ugly, but the devil's already doomed. The devil's already condemned. The devil's just on borrowed time. And the Bible says that's why it's going on in the world like it is right now. It's because he knows that he has but a short time left. Jesus in John chapter 4 said, I must needs go through Samaria. But wait a minute, Lord. You know, we, we're Jews. And they're Samaritans. And you know, a lot of times those Jews, if they were going like from up in Galilee down to Judea, they'd take that long way around just to keep from going through Samaria. They might go 50, 40, 50 miles out of the way. You say, that ain't all that far. Yeah, when you're walking it is. That's two days. That ain't putting it in gear and you're getting 60 mile hour out of it. That's two days. He said, I must needs go through Samaria. Because he knew God's train run right on time. That song that they sing once in a while, four days later, when we think he's late, he's right on time. He gets to the well and the Bible says he sits down on that well because he was weary. He had no strength. He was fatigued. He was tired. He sat down. Tired in body. Now understand this. And all three of these, when he was up in the wilderness, and when he was on the boat, and when he got to the well there at Sacha, he was tired in body. You say, but he was God. Yeah, but he was God made flesh. His body got tired. He stumped his toe. It hurt. If he fell and hit his knee on a rock, it hurt. He faced the things that you and I face. 
He was weary. He was tired. The rest of the disciples, I don't know if they told him, Master, you just wait here, we'll go get it or not. But he sat down at the well, they go into town, and here comes a woman. The Bible says it's a sixth hour, she come at 12 noon, she come in the hot part of the day, and you don't haul water then. Mm -hmm. But there wasn't none of the other ladies out there. Didn't know other ladies want to be associated with her. But the Bible says he sat down there and here she comes. And you know what happened? He told her, he said, I've got living water. You'll never thirst again. She said, Lord, ever more give me this water. He said, where's your husband? Bring him. I ain't got a husband. He said, you're right. You've had five and the one you're with right now said you're not even married to. She said, Miss they tell us that when Messiah comes, he'll tell us all things. He said, I would speak to thee and me. But you're a Jew and you say we're supposed to worship in Jerusalem. And, and our father said we're supposed to worship in this mouse. He said, you need to understand the hour comes and now he is. And it's not where, but it's how. Yeah, right. Don't go through the motions. Yeah. Don't go through ritual. Don't go through ceremony. Don't go through heaven. Amen. He said... He desires us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. That's why, listen to me, we talked about those services outside. Bless God, I enjoyed them. And I'll be the first to tell you, you don't have to have four walls and a roof to worship God. You don't have to have a pulpit to worship God. What you need is the Word of God and the Spirit of God to show up and thank God that will get the job done. Worship Him in spirit and truth. You say, watch your point. I don't care how tired and weary he was. Thank God. He led one. And then she went back to town. Come see a man who has told me all things. I must needs go to Samaria. Ain't nobody down there but trash. <laughs> no, there's people down there that's going to die and go to hell if they don't hear the trash. And they begged him to stay. Now understand that. Back up to Mark chapter 4. He is wore out. They even woke him up in the middle of the night. You know what happened when he got to the other side? The crazy man was in the tombs. Crazy man. The land of the Gadarenes. The tribe of Gad. Of the nation of Israel. Shouldn't have even been hauling or messing and carrying with hogs. Come on. All that God had gave them told them hogs was unclean. They weren't supposed to be around swine. And yet, when those demons out of that mad legion went into those hogs, they ran down the cliff, they jumped off into the sea and ended up choking, strangling, drowning, whatever you want to. You know what they did? Those people that were of the stock of Abraham, those people that were of one of the tribes of Israel, they told him to leave. To leave. And yet those Samaritans, most of those, those same gatherings would have called trash. They begged him to stay. You say, preacher, he wasted his time in the land of the gatherings. No, he didn't. Bless God, there's one got saved and went back and told everybody what Jesus had done in his life. I mentioned him Sunday. This woman ain't no telling us how many people she brought back. And then part of them even told her. Said, you know, we believe because of what you said. And you, you say, preacher, you, you advocate women. Preacher. No, but I'm saying, ladies, y'all can have just as big a testimony and effect on people as a man can. Amen. They said, part of us believe because of what you said. And the rest of us believe because of what he said. I must needs go to Samaria. I don't care how tired I am. Somebody's down there dying. Paul had a vision one night of a man in Macedonia and all he said was come over and help us. Please come and help us. And thank God they loaded up and went. We get to the point sometimes we just too tired and think we can't go on. But we got no idea what kind of difference can be made in somebody's life. Mm -hmm. And we use Jesus in Matthew chapter 26 was giving us a warning and we use it as an excuse. He takes eight of the disciples and leaves them here. 
He takes Peter, James, and John and goes on a little further. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. He goes a little further. He begins to pray. His sweat becomes his great drops of blood. And he comes back to him and he finds him asleep. And he says, what's the matter? Couldn't you wait? Couldn't you pray one hour? And he gives what I call a warning. You can call it an excuse or whatever. But we use it as an excuse. He said, the spirit indeed is with him. But the flesh is weak. And you say, preacher, that's me. I really want to do something for God. But I'm just too tired to go. Paul said, that's why I keep my body and bring it under subjection. Paul said, I don't let my body control me. I control my body. We look at that and we think we're just talking about sin. How many times was Paul dog tired and yet kept going? If we'd have been through the shipwrecks he had, if we'd have been through the beatings he had, if we'd have been through the stonings he had, we'd have stopped a long time ago. Sore, scars. He said, I buried my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't say soul. He said body. Physical scars. Physical marks. And yet, he said, when it'd be easy to sit down and quit, he said, I keep on going. He didn't sit around and wait for somebody else. The Bible says that when he was in Athens and he was waiting for Timothy to join him, it says that he went on through and he walked through Mars Hill. He saw all those idols. He saw all those temples. He saw all those altars. He said, let me tell y'all a little something, something. And he said, all this ignorance in times past, God winked at you say, why are you saying that? I'm saying that to let you know you don't have to have a crowd with you to stand up for Jesus when you mm -hmm. even, no matter what you've been through. He said, times past this ignorance God winked at, but now God's appointed a day in which He'll judge all men by that man whom He hath ordained. He's going to judge every one of us for Jesus Christ. And listen to me, children. We're going. If you know you're saved, that's absolutely wonderful. But just because we're saved, don't give us the right to sit down and quit. You say, well, preacher, with what I go through, I know, I know. Preacher, with the way I feel, yeah, yeah, I know. I've seen people in hospital beds give some of the best testimonies and be some of the best witnesses you've ever seen in your life. Mm -hmm. Couldn't get up out of the hospital bed and yet could lay there and brag on Jesus and talk about His goodness and talk about His grace and talk about His mercy. And us who are in good health, even though we might be tired, can't even go knock on the door and invite somebody to church. Mm -hmm. That's an amen or an old me, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. But it's a fact. Sure. It's a fact. I wonder sometimes, are we really tired? I said we, I didn't say y'all. Are we tired or are we lazy? The spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. Oh, bless their hearts. We're pitiful things, ain't we? People's dying and going to hell. And we want to take our shoes off. You say, well, what do, what do I do? What do I do? What can I do? Where did Jesus get his strength? He got his strength. Remember, remember, before he went up into that wilderness, he appeared to be going alone. But remember the Spirit of God had descended on him in the form of a dove? You say by the grace of God you got that same Spirit. Am I right or wrong? Right. So where are you going to get your strength from? Where are you going to get your help from? Where are you going to get your ability from? You're going to get it from that same Spirit. In Isaiah chapter 41, he says, I am thy God. Mm -hmm. Now think about Isaiah. I don't know how much persecution Isaiah went through, but Jewish history teaches us that it was Manasseh. It was the son of Hezekiah that had the prophet Isaiah placed between two pieces of wood and sawed in half. Now you think about that. Not a power saw. It had probably been a cross cut. You say, preacher, that's pretty graphic. It is, ain't it? You think about that pain. You think about every time that saw moved. How it felt. 
But Isaiah was one that saw the things of God and God showed him some things and, and he was able to tell the rest of it. He said, I am thy God. In chapter 41, he said, I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. When you can't walk, I'll pick you up. When you can't make it by yourself, I'll hold you up. And there's times, you know, old song, who was it? Teddy Huffman wrote, no. Might have even been, Teddy Huffman wrote it, but I think Elridge Fox wrote it. Teddy Huffman sung it. They said, I can't even walk without him holding my hand. And we do, God says, I'll get you up. You say, well, God, I'm up, but I can't stand you. God says, no, I'm going to hold you up. He said, well, God, I can't walk. No, you're yoked with me, so come on. You ain't walking by yourself. He said, I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. If we'll do what God would have us to do. If we'll be obedient to the things of God. And you say, the strength is gone. That's why he is our strength. That's exactly right. When, he, when we're weak, He's strong. He became poor so that we could be rich. He died so that we could have life. Folks, how many times? And I didn't see that. Didn't even, this didn't click till last night. In Matthew chapter 11, Jesus made a statement that every one of us could quote. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Mm -hmm. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. You know, they say if you don't use muscles, they get weak. A lot of people that lays in the bed for a long time, muscles will begin to atrophy and they're no good. And they have to get them out when they finally get out of a hospital room or out of a bed. They have to do physical therapy on them. Some of them just so they can walk. Some of them just so they can pick up a fork and a spoon again because their muscles are so gone that they can't even. But he said, those that labor, those that work, how can I expect, as a child of God, how can I expect Him to strengthen me if I'm not going to work for Him? Right. Come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden. That's a combination there. Mm -hmm. That's not a this or that. It's this and that. And I'm afraid there's too many... In, in, the, in the body of Christ, there's too many in the churches sometimes that, that they think, well, you know, I don't see God strengthening me. I don't see Him helping me. What are you doing for Him? What am I doing for Him? What are we trying to accomplish? A church is not, and, and I'm going to go with this. I hadn't even thought about this, but a church is not a place just for the same old, same old to come in and gather together week after week and service after service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> you and I have a responsibility. Yeah. That old song Ronnie Henson wrote, the light, and we ought to be that lighthouse. Yeah. Yeah. We ought to let people see the light of Jesus Christ. We ought to let people see that they don't have to walk in darkness. They don't have to crash on the rocks. They don't have to go down. They don't have to sink. But thank God that they can come into a place that they can hear the Word of God taught, preached, and come to a saving knowledge of Christ. Yeah. And yet I'm afraid too many times we just say, well, you know what? I went to church Sunday morning. I went to church Sunday night. I went to church Wednesday night. I've done my part. There ain't nothing else I need to do. Lord, help us. Yeah. Lord, help us. But they that wait upon the Lord. That word wait means serve. Isaiah chapter 40. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up as wings of eagles. 
They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Mm -hmm. They that wait upon the Lord. They that serve God. And I told you for years, I used to think that was somebody that just, well, let's just, let's don't get in a rush. Let's, let's yeah. wait and see what got done. Yeah. Wait and serve. Waitress, waiter. You got me? We that serve God. You know why most of us don't fly high? You know why most of us don't ever get to the mountaintop? You know why most of us don't really get blessed like God wants us to bless and get that close to heaven that God wants us to be? It's because we're not willing to do anything for Him. Mm -hmm. right. Right. And as I said it Sunday, Psalm 46 1 says, God is our refuge and our strength. A very present right now. Are you tired right now? Let him give you strength right now. A very present help in time of trouble. He came back. Victorious. Those men that refused, they paid the price. God's people are going to get the victory. Matter of fact, if you're saved by the grace of God, you already got it. Amen. But one of these days, all the battles are going to be over. The war is going to be finished. We're going to go home. And those that have stood against the church, those that have stood against God, and stood against God's people, are going to pay the price. Mm -hmm. That's why I always thought it was Really amazing there in Revelation chapter number 19. After we get through this, the judgment seat of Christ, where are we going? We're going to sit down at the table. And God's people are going to be filled like they've never been filled before. Mm -hmm. Ezra and Nehemiah have been through it all. Trying to get Jerusalem rebuilt, trying to get the walls rebuilt, trying to get the temple rebuilt, trying to get holding through the trying to get the rubble and the trash and everything done. And it got to the point, you know, at one point Nehemiah said, we don't even, we don't, we don't even, when we lay down, we don't even take our clothes off to lay down. All the time we even get, even do that is to try to do a little washing off and we get the job done. We work with a sword in one hand and the, and the tools in the other to put the wall back together. And work with his dog tired, but was it 51, 52 days? The wall was finished. <clears throat> then they could rest. One of these days you're not going to have rest, but not now. The job's not done. Mm -hmm. He said, well, preacher, I'm tired already. I know y'all. I know y'all. That's why I made the statement Sunday. Don't ever talk to me about how you're too old to do something for God. When I see Moses, when I see uh, Josh, when I see Caleb do what they were doing. Don't tell me you're too old. But Nehemiah, when it's over and done with, he said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord, the, the gladness of the Lord, the rejoicing of the Lord. You say, what do you mean, preacher? When you're not physically able, think about why Jesus said what he said when he said, I've got meat to eat that you know not of. Think about the man Simon Peter who the night before Jesus was crucified denied him three times and even cussed his name. And yet 53 days later after fasting and praying for 10 days in that upper room the Holy Ghost of God fell. He went out to preach with a boldness that they'd never seen him have and 3,000 people got saved. You say, but they've been fasting and praying that long. Wasn't he hungry? Yeah, he was. Right. But the joy of the Lord yeah. was his strength. The rejoicing over what? Don't tell me. There might have been some of them same people that heard him cuss. There might have been some of them same people that heard him deny Jesus. Right there in the city of Jerusalem when he began to stand and pray. And that, I can just imagine that little servant girl, that little maid that was there in the high priest house. That was him. That's the man that told me he didn't know him. 
That's the man that cussed him. Listen to him. He don't even sound like the same man anymore. It's amazing what happens when God moves in and takes over. Get in and said, that's all right. You don't want to help me now. We'll be victorious. So the men didn't stop to eat. They kept right on going. Still tired. Still hungry. Still faint. Still thirsty. And they kept going. He said, preacher, that's all well and good. But what am I supposed to do? What did Paul tell us to do? We're to press toward the mark of the high calling. Which is in Christ Jesus. You say, what do you mean press? That means run. That means don't let nothing stop you. That means keep pushing. And when the devil tries to stop you, the devil tries to block you, man, you just keep right on going. You know, you go back and you can watch or you can read history. Some of those old Roman legions and, and even those Greek soldiers, they would line up side by side and their swords just about interlocking each other. Here'd come that army, people behind them, and they'd stand their ground. You know what they'd do? Push! And they'd take one step. But they all took it together. Yeah. They didn't try to go 100 miles. Just one step at a time. I pressed for the mark. Preacher, I'm tired. Just take that one step. Just take that one step. You know, we used to tell our youngest when they didn't want to eat, we'd say, just one more bite. Mm -hmm. They take one. <laughs> and Roger's back there. I can't see his face, but I, I imagine what's going through his mind. They take that and I say, that's good, man. Just one more bite. Mm -hmm. He'd say, Daddy, you said one more. Just one more. That's all you got to do. Just one more. You keep taking it one step at a mile. It don't take uh, one step at a time. It don't take you long to get a mile. Okay? Let's just follow him one step at a time and press forward the mark. Even tired, take that one step. If you got to stop and take a breath, take that one step. Just don't back up. Don't back up. We get tired, we get weary, we get faint, we get hungry, we get thirsty, we get to the point we want to sit down and quit. But then I see a Savior who had been up all day, had been up all night, he was praying in the garden, and his heart was broken. They bring him through the mockery of a trial. They take him out to a hill called Calvary. They throw him down on the ground, and they nail him to a cross. He's already tired. He's He's not eating. He's not had anything to drink. They've already took him to the whipping post and, and beat the flesh off his back and he's still going. Because he knows it's not finished until he gets to Calvary. And even at Calvary, when he has to pull himself up against the pain of those nails to take a breath, and he looks out over the crowd and says, Father, forgive them for they know not what to do. And he drops back down. And the thief on the right says, Lord, remember me when I come to sin thy kingdom. And he raises himself up one more time to, so the diaphragm will take another breath. And he looks over and says, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Thank God the three best words that was ever uttered. It is finished. Nothing else to be done. He didn't stop until the job was done. Paul said we're to press toward the mark. Paul said he finished his course. Don't stop short. Keep on going. Again, I ain't talking about being discouraged. If it was discouragement, there wasn't none of, none of us even be here tonight probably. But the body gets tired. But even when the spirit is willing, make that flesh take one step at a time. One step at a time. And thank God when you get done, you'll be victorious. Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for allowing us to be here.
Thank you for letting us look at a portion of your word. Lord, I pray tonight that I said it in the right way. I pray tonight, God, that something was said to encourage your people. Oh, Father, in the days we're living in right now, it ain't time to quit. It's time to keep on going. It's not time to slow down. It's not time to take your shoes off and kick back. It's time to work because night's coming when there'll not be any more work done. Father, strengthen your children. Lift them up. Give them the energy. Give them the strength. Give them the power to be able to do what you'd have each one of us to do. I thank you for each one that's here tonight. I thank you for those that are watching online. Thank you that we have this time to spend together. Now you go with us through the remainder of this service. And for what you do well, thank you. We ask you in Jesus' sweet name. Amen.